After UVing our cup, we are now ready to export this cup here to our 3D painting application. And I showed the process in the last Houdini practice hour with the help of the toothbrush. So if you have more questions and you want to see a little bit more about the workflow, I can reference you to these videos. Or if you have questions, please leave a comment below and I will be happy to help you. So in this lesson now, I want to make this cup now ready. And we have to do some things. First thing is, you see it's still low poly here. Then we need a low poly version and a high poly version for baking. This is something I do all the time. And if you want to work in a 3D painting application, in most of the cases you need texture sets. So you need dummy materials on different parts of the cup. So let's do all of that here. The first thing I want to do is I want to subdivide the whole thing. You see in my file I have added here a normal node here to get some normals here on the mesh and after these normals I can subdivide the whole thing here. The subdivision node does exactly the same like the viewport subdivisions or the subdivisions in Mantra. You can tell here the system which algorithm it should use. So the Mantra compatible method or the open subdiv. You have here the depth, how deep you want to subdivide. And I only want to subdivide it once so that we have some more polygons and we can look around if we have problems here. And this is now our low poly version. To output this, we need a ROP and we use a ROP FBX output. So let's branch this out here. And then we name the whole thing and place it. And I go into my job, you know, in my structure, I normally have a folder from Houdini and we name this. This is the low poly version of the cup. Let's write it like this cap low poly, maybe something like that. Okay. And it should be an FBX. Then we only want to have the current frame and I don't like to export in ASCII. So I always deactivate this because I found that some programs are not able to read this correctly. So I deactivate this. I don't click render at the moment because we first build our whole setup. We make a copy of this node. I hold down my alt or option key to make the copy of this. Then we have here the high poly version. Okay. And to make it high poly, we use our friend, the subdivide node again. Let's check how this here looks. This is the high poly. And if you want, you can make it even more high poly. So it's only for baking. So yeah, that's right here. And if you like, you can then name your ROP. So this is prepared for exporting. Now we have to make the dummy materials. So let's check what we have. I hold down here the middle mouse button over the merge node. And you remember that in the last lesson, we built these groups here. And you see that I have a group more than you. It's named rich material here. I found when I tested the whole thing that we have the problem that here on this part of the whole thing, let's go to the cup. We had the inner material here. Let's show this by pressing the S for the selection tool and nine for the groups. We have the inside material here, which is inside of the cup. Then we had the outside, but there was a part here, which is this ridge here, which we didn't have. So I named this ridge material and I generated this group here with the help of the two other groups. Let's search for this. I made it here in this tree here. So we had the paper inside. So we made this group here and then we deleted everything. And so we only had the inside and the outside. What I done then here, before we delete everything, I used a group combine node. And this is a really powerful node because you can name here a group which you want to generate, in our case, the rich. And I add everything to this rich material first with a star or asterisk. And then I subtract from this new group here everything which is in the paper outside and in the paper inside group. So here's subtraction. And so you get all the rest. And you will find, if you test this with a blast node, that this ridge here is not only on the top, I had also a little area here, delete non-selected here in the bottom of the whole thing. But for me, it's okay. So this is the ridge here 
which I was talking about. And yeah, this here is the part which I also have in the group. And so we generated this rich material group. And here under delete, don't forget that you have also to exclude this from the deletion. So here is a new exclude for that. Okay, that's it. I think what we have done, now we can make our materials. And one tip from production is, I see a lot that newbies normally tend to go now to the materials network here and add here their materials and add them then after they generated them to the object. Nothing really wrong with that, but the problem is if you later go here to the objects level and you want to copy this node into another scene or you want to make a Houdini digital asset out of that, you have references which go out of this container. And I normally want to encapsulate everything which belongs to the cup into the cup. So what I do now is I dive into this here and I make a material network here. And I name this here, for example, mantra materials. So maybe we have a lesson about V-ray materials or random end materials. So make a mantra materials here. And this is a full material network, like slash mat. So we can use it here. And now we have to add materials here. And the question is where? If you go now to the merge here, you see we have the paper inside, outside, outside here, rich. Yeah. The only thing which is missing here is the lid itself. So everything which is the paper we can do here. The lid is here in this stream. You can generate, if you like, here a group for the whole lid. You saw that we used here groups for the UV flattenings and all of this stuff. So make a group here and say we need a lit underscore material group, everything inside of that. And if you now take a look here, we have now this lit material group. And if we now go here, let's make a little bit of space. We can add now here everything. Here it is, lit material. Okay, let's add a material node for adding the mantra materials. And for this, I prepare now first here my materials. A little trick I do really often is I now split here my paints. So you can go here to the white arrow, say split to top and bottom, set here the pin also here so that they are not context sensitive anymore. So they don't follow the selection. So I can stay here in this window here on the assignment. So on this material node and here, if you now go here into the material network, you can work now here with your shaders. So you have both here. If you want, you can also fix your parameters here with a pin and if you make a right mouse button click here, you see numbers. So you can have pins with numbers. That means, for example, if you number this pin with one and you click something here, then only the parameters with the pin number one get the signal. But yeah, in our case, this is okay, like it is. So make a principal shader here. And I run now through this and think about what we need. So let's start with the lid. So cap underscore lit. Okay. And then what we also need is, I make a duplicate of this, the cup paper outside. And another duplicate here, cap paper inside. Then we need the cap paper bottom. And our new friend, the cap paper rich. I don't think that we ever will see it, but yeah. So I think everything is prepared here. And now I click here this mantra materials node for the assignment. And now you see we have here one tab with the number one. You will have a group. So you now can look into these groups here and say, okay, let's start with the lit material. I take this group. Then I take this material and I drag it here into the slot. Please, Maya guys, don't use the middle mouse button and don't drag a bit here on the name here into the field and then you get here <laughs> the link. Okay, this is the lit material. Then we need more slots. So you can press here the plus sign. And one important note is you see that the focus is still here on tab number one. 
And I see all the time that people now change this year because they think it's a duplicate. No, it's not a duplicate. It still is on number one. You have to switch here to number two. We go now here. Now we start with, for example, the bottom part. So let's take bottom here. Then we make the next tab go to the three. Then we say we want to have the outside. Make a new one, click it. Then we go to the inside. So lid, bottom, outside, inside. And the last one is our ridge. So rich material, and this is the rich. So after we've done now this, the assignment hopefully works. And what we now can do is we can set a camera here. So get rid of here with the nine key of the groups and go into the camera tool here, set our display flag to the complete cup. Switch for a nice angle. Okay. Control click onto the camera. So we get a camera now here in the scene context. Nice. You can go into the view of the camera. If you want, you can change here the resolution to full HD. If you want to render something like that. Then we have here the focal length. I want to have 65. That's good. And then I can move here with the help of the handle tool my camera a little bit. I don't use lights at the moment. We do that in the rendering step. So everything hopefully is okay. I save and now we can go into the render view and press render. So an IPR is generated and it finds the camera number one normally. And so we can take a look what we have. Press the H key to zoom everything in. Yeah, and now we see our cap and still these colors. Where do the colors come from? You remember that we added in our tree here vertex colors with the color nodes. And if you now go here into your shading network, you see that every of these principal shaders here use point colors. So this is something we want to get rid of. So deactivate this. Otherwise, you overwrite your base colors always with the colors which you defined in your tree as a modeling helper. So test it again. And so everything should be gray now. Yeah, looks fine for me. I think that's it. We can bring this down here. And now we have all the materials on it. We have subdivided everything. And now we can go to our first drop here and save our low poly version of the FBX into our project. Then we go to the high poly drop here which used another subdivision here and save this FPX out. That's it for this lesson. Now we have a low poly object, a high poly object, and we now can start in Substance Painter, in Mari, or in 3D code, texturing the whole thing and bring the maps back. This is something I showed in the Toothbrush project. So if you can't wait, you can watch these tutorials. I will make a bonus tutorial about the UDIMs. So be a little bit patient with that. And yeah, we see each other in the next lesson. My name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train. See you.